Hi, Kathy D. Harris here. Your quiz results are below, and I want to thank you for taking the quiz, but I want to share this short training video that I created, and I think you'll find it helpful. And I want to start by asking you some questions. What does a typical day in your practice feel like? Does it feel like the demands on your time exceed your capacity? Are you constantly or frequently overloaded? Are the demands from your staff, staff pardon me, overwhelming? You see, the clients that I work with, their biggest question is, how do I grow the revenue and profits for my dental practice? But their challenge is time and energy and getting their staff to help. So I have the answer for you in a very special offer while you're on this page. Um, and it's an offer only for dental practice owners who have completed the practice growth and leadership quiz. And it will help you identify and prioritize the action you must take to grow your practice and get your staff committed to growth. So it's called a practice growth blueprint. And the first step is to have your foundations in place. So let me just talk about what those are. There are six of them. First of all, your market dominating position. And this may not be language you're familiar with. But what this is about is being able to identify what advantage or results your patients want the most and then to clearly demonstrate what makes your practice a better choice. Because more often than not, if you can do that, patients will you choose your practice over your competition. Trust, education, and expertise. People have to know you, like you, and trust you before they'll purchase from you. And so my recommendation is always that you provide lots of education and that you identify at least three areas where in your community, you're the resident expert and you plant your flag. Um, I'm the expert in children's uh, dental or in seniors or in healthy aging um, as it relates to dentistry. And then you develop a strategy or use a strategic approach. Um, it's not unusual for me to see dental practices that are advertising in the paper and doing pay-per-click, maybe sending out postcards, all to try and bring in new patients, but they don't have a strategy. They don't have a way to identify what the message is they're trying to get out there. And so their marketing and their growth becomes diluted because they don't have a strategy. You have to have policies and procedures that are written and updated yearly. And leadership. One of the cornerstones of my approach with dental practices is to teach staff to think like a practice owner. It takes a lot of pressure off of you, the owner. And so how do you do that? Well, first of all, it's about transparency. Your team needs to see the full picture. You need to cultivate a problem-solving culture and show staff the big picture and what some of the potential problems are. And how do you do that? Well, regular team meetings and sharing your KPI, Key Performance Indicator Reports, on an ongoing basis. You need to facilitate an environment that is feedback-driven. And then you need to do shared leadership training. So it's not just you that's leading everyone but you're sharing that with some of your staff. And finally, the patient experience, um, the congruency between your values and the patient experience. Do you do automated patient satisfaction surveys? Do you interview patients about their experience in your practice? And do you have a patient experience checklist uh, to keep your staff on track, but also to train new staff as they come on board? Okay, step number two. And this is about maximizing the profitability within your existing patient base. You don't want to bring in new patients if you're not maximizing what you already have. So that's reducing no-shows and short notice cancellations, filling your production schedule, seeing your existing patients more often, patient retention. You don't want to bring in 10 new patients and lose 10 patients. That defeats the whole purpose. And then reactivating former patients. What are you doing to make sure that you address that? Step three, identify strategies to bring in more new patients. 
You see, people begin to look for a new dentist, and before they walk through the door or pick up the phone, they begin that process of getting to know you, like you, and trust you. They began to look for a dental practice that addresses any concerns they might have had with their last dentist. So what are some of the um, strategies that you can do to bring in new patients? Well, there are so many. First of all, who is your ideal patient? What do they want versus what do they need? And how do patients decide to buy from your practice? So if you take a look at, say, the last two months and the new patients that came in, where did they come from? Why did they choose you? Interview them. Ask those questions because whatever it was that they did, you want to be doing more of that or making it easier for others to do that. An opt-in list. I'm not sure if that's language people are familiar with, but do you send potential new patients to your homepage of your website or to a landing page? Um, do you offer them a lead magnet, a free report that addresses your ideal patient's main concerns? And do you follow up with email? Do you have referral systems in-house, neighborhood referral program, and a referral rewards program? Publicity and PR. Do you do media releases when you have something important to say? And then I want to talk a little bit about direct mail based on gradual discontent. So what is gradual discontent? Well, it's about showing prospective patients how your practice is different and better. Often parents reach dissatisfaction over time. Dissatisfied patients believe that their value and service expectations just weren't met. Um, so most likely they received mediocre service based on how they were greeted, the time it took to help them, the way their complaints were handled, or the quality of service or product they received. And I want you to write this number down, 94. And that's an important number because 94 out of 100 patients will leave without a word of complaint. 94 out of 100. Now, if you knew why those 94 patients left, you could address their issues or concerns. But if you don't know, you're really in a hard place. Okay, advertising. I see people advertising in newspapers, on Facebook, but where do your ideal patients hang out? What do they read? What are they interested in? Um, your headline is the most important part of your ad. So what does your headline say? I have a marketing equation that I encourage people to follow, and it's called interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. And you have to understand frequency, and it's a rule of 27. Three impressions equal one good impression. Nine good impressions equal action. So that means you have to be in front of people 27 times. So there's a whole lot of ways to do that. That's Facebook and um, phone calls and letters and postcards and risk reversal which is a money-back guarantee what's the strongest guarantee you can offer you need to make sure that people know what it is another way to bring in new patients is strategic alliance with other local businesses partner with a business who serves the same people that you want to serve use local products and services in your office and proudly display the local connection paper clip on facebook and google a blog Provide high quality content with an occasional offer. Look for guest bloggers. If your ideal patient or you're really targeting um, families with young children, who could you interview as a guest blogger to really provide them with some value? Be a guest blogger for others. So if you're going to blog, determine your frequency and stay consistent because that builds trust. Social media. Facebook is a big one. Um, I often get asked, well, you know, how often should I post on Facebook? What should I post? Well, whatever your posting schedule is going to be, make sure that you stay consistent. I suggest at least three times a week and that you use a mix of posting. Patient profile, a staff profile, seasonal postings, fun, non-dental posts. And I'll tell you that those fun, non-dental posts are the ones that will often get the most attention. Um, and make sure you use the Facebook pixel for retargeting. Get that Facebook pixel on your website. So Twitter, you can match your Facebook posts on Twitter. 
Pinterest, LinkedIn, Google My Business, make sure that you have claimed your profile. If you haven't, then create one. And then Instagram. So SEM, SEO, um, you know, I see dentists that are doing pay-per-click on, on Google and they send everyone to the homepage of their website. You don't want to do that. Um, you want to create specific landing pages to capture those leads. Make sure you have Google Analytics set up so that you can determine which pages people are looking at and how long they're on those pages. Public speaking. A speaker is automatically the expert. Write a book. And I'm sure as soon as I said that, you went, oh my gosh, I don't have time to write a book. Um, write a paper. Short is okay. Quality is what matters. And it establishes your authority in the marketplace. Purchase leads. Um, a new movers list is a really interesting list um, to target. Mergers and acquisitions, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but if you're merging a practice or you've purchased a practice and you're bringing that patient base into your practice, um, prior to acquisition, what do you need to do? There's a lot of due diligence that needs to happen. After the purchase, um, what is your onboarding and integration of that practice? So there's lots to talk about there in terms of bringing in new patients. And so here we are. Step four are KPIs or key performance indicators. Be a savvy operator and know your numbers. You know, practice can improve by 5 to 25 percent just by knowing and tracking these 15 KPIs. It's, it's quite phenomenal how that can happen. So what are the 15 KPIs? Well, production by category, production by timelines, retention of existing patients, case acceptance, doctor production versus hygiene production. Just an interesting number. The average practice, 34% um, of revenue is from hygiene. In a highly preventative practice, 46% of revenue is from hygiene. So just moving more towards a highly preventative practice will increase your profits. The percentage of patients rescheduled before leaving. The average practice has 85% scheduled before they leave. Benchmark your practice. What are your numbers? Cancellation and no-show rates. I've done an interesting training uh, that I'd be happy to share with you. It's a PowerPoint on how to reduce cancellations and no-show rates. And then financial intelligence. So as the owner of the practice, understand the importance of your KPIs. You should know your net profit margins, your gross profit margins, operating cash flow, and your overhead costs. And then benchmark all of these KPIs. Identify how you're going to get that, those numbers, who will be responsible for gathering and tracking, and then when will you need to see each KPI to know that you're on top of how your practice is performing. And once you have that information, you can then set some goals for improvement. 5 to 25% improvement can happen just from gathering and knowing your KPIs. Okay, so begin with a clear picture of how your practice is doing. What is the dental practice blueprint? Simply put, it's a checklist of your practice's growth strategies. You must have specific foundations in place to develop a successful plan to grow. Your practice blueprint will give you insight into what you and your staff should be working on. It will identify changes or improvements you can make so that your practice is optimized for growth. Uh, so let's just quickly talk about what it covers. The critical foundations you must have in place, strategies to bring in new patients, what you need to look at to make sure you're maximizing the production from your existing patients, and finally, the most important KPIs you should be tracking and measuring. How can you access the practice blueprint? Well, I'm going to make you a special offer. Normally the blueprint is $197, but I'm making this special offer just for dentists that have taken the practice growth and leadership quiz because I know you're serious about growing your practice. So for you, the, the blueprint is only $27. You know, you might be saying, well, why is it only $27, Kathy, if it's so good? Well, I do want to be fully transparent in making you this special offer because I think when you see it and you see the value the blueprint provides, your next question is going to be, okay, Kathy, what do you have next? How else can you help me? Um, and you don't have to worry. The blueprint comes with a 100% money back guarantee. If for any reason you get the blueprint and you don't think that it was really helpful, 
use it for 60 days and then just let me know. If you don't think it was helpful, I'll give you your money back. There'll be no questions asked. So here's the way this works. Click the red button below and you'll be taken to a secure payment page. But I want you to stop right now before you order it. Because if you don't do these next things, then the practice blueprint will not serve you. And here it is. Your only job after you get the blueprint for the next 60 days is to track your numbers. You can't do this without staff involvement. So at your next team meeting, share with your staff the 15 KPIs you'll be tracking. In a word of caution, you must do an accurate count of these numbers. Do not assume. Really quick story. I asked um, one practice that I was working with. We were in that first month and we were doing a practice assessment. I said, on average, how often do your patients come in? And he said, well, I think they come in every six to nine months on average. I said, great, but I don't want to um, make any assumptions. So I want you to track what the month that we just went through and the, and the patients coming in over the next month and then give me your actual numbers. Get your staff involved in tracking these numbers. Now here's the, here's the story. Um, four weeks later, when we're putting all of these numbers into his roadmap, I asked him for that number. And he put his head down. He said, you know, I was surprised and, and disappointed. He said, you know, on average, my patients are coming in every 12 months. Now for me, I was excited because if his patients are only coming in every 12 months, and we can put processes in place to bring them in every six to 12 months, even if we only do that with 50%, that's a huge influx of uh, profit into his practice. So if you really wanna optimize the revenues from your practice, attract more new patients, and get your staff committed to optimizing your practice, click the red button below and get your practice, practice blueprint now. Oh, I've been talking too long. Okay, so, Here's my contact information. Kathy at harrisgroup.ca is my email address. 705-745-7477 is my phone number. Um, I would really love to get some feedback on the blueprint from you. If you have any questions or want to book a practice growth strategy session with me, call or email and I'll send you a link to my calendar. Um, as always, I am dedicated to your success.